Next up, we have, wow. Beast mode, Katrina Amaral. Who knows Katrina here? Wow, just, I'm so excited for this. Katrina is an award-winning realtor and BC's top real estate team leader, having facilitated the sale of 2,500 homes. Wow, in 19 years. Wow, a successful realtor and listing specialist. She exemplifies leadership and mentorship. Katrina is a devout family woman celebrated for her commitment to health, wellness, and community service. She upholds her values as a servant leader and devout Catholic. Without further ado, Katrina Amaral, let's go! All right, so it's really hard to be one of the last few ones because I, I spent the last two days like pacing, stressing out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm about to change my talk. Oh my gosh. He talked about this, and what else am I going to talk about, really? Everyone shared a lot of great things, amazing things that you can take back and implement and execute. So what else do I really have to talk about? Okay, that's all my talk. But anyway, um, I started real estate 20 years ago. I know, I was 10 when I started real estate. <laughs> no, kidding aside, I started when I was in my early 20s. I was 23. I joined an office with predominantly male realtors. And I look like, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, listing strategies. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my story. But yeah, my, I look like that. But I mean, I like the skin. I'm like, okay, I, look, I didn't look as stressed, no wrinkles. Um, but when I started real estate, I was only, I've only been in the country for six years. I have this accent. I'm, I didn't go to high school here, so I didn't really have friends. I went to college here, but you know, when you didn't go to high school here, I don't think you'll have friends, but that's just me because all I wanted to do was work. But um, when I joined the Red, White, and Blue um, company 20 years ago, um, mostly male, in their 50s, handful of women. I was the only one under 30. And I was 23. And I was this Asian, young Asian woman. And someone told me, you will not last. You'll be out of here before you can renew your, your license. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You don't know me. I'm an immigrant. I have an immigrant mentality. And I will prove you wrong. And I guess I'm still here. I've, I'm renewing my license in the next few years. So, well, that's just to prove that, you know, you got to make up your mind that you want to do it, right? And then a couple years later, Neil, that's my husband. That's how we look like. I wanted to look older because I apparently look so young. I chopped my hair and then I looked younger. I was like 16. So, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. But during the two years that I've been in, I was in the business, um, first year I sold 38 homes. I made $180,000 at that time. That was a lot of money. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm hiring an assistant. I, can't, I need to do more of this. And for me to be able to do more of what I want to do, I needed to hire a full-time assistant. No, it wasn't Neil. It was Vanessa. She's still with us up to today. She's our transaction coordinator. And people were saying, so this man, I'm sorry, it's not like, it's not a... What do you call that? Again, the English as my second language is starting to come up. Um, but it, it, it's just that because it's a predominantly male-dominated office, they're like, why are you hiring an assistant? Are you crazy? You can do it all yourself. I'm like, well, no. For me to do what I need to do, I need a full-time assistant. They're like, full-time assistant? Where are you going to get the money to, get to, to, pay the, to pay this young lady? I needed to bet on myself. So lesson number one, don't listen to naysayers. Lesson number two, do the things that would help you do more of the higher quality work that you need to do. And then I hired, I also, during that first two years, I hired an assistant, in fact, uh, sorry, a coach. In fact, three months into the business, I hired a coach because another man, older man in the business, can really need to work on my um, thinking about the right words to say because I'm politically incorrect there. But anyway, have, forgive me, it's my second language. But having said that, I, I had to listen to someone else because he told me, Katrina, you're new in the business? Hire a coach. Go call Richard Robbins and hire them. 
So I got two different advice from two different people who's well experienced. One person said, I will not last. I'm crazy for hiring a coach. I'm crazy for hiring an assistant. And another person who's very successful said, hire a coach and you will be successful. And these are two successful people, but the true, the, the real successful people wanted to see other people succeed. So I listened to those ones. Um, so the first two years were really amazing. Neil joined me a few months after we hired an assistant, and it was amazing. People even said, why are you working together with my then boyfriend, Neil? And they're like, you're just going to end up breaking up. You're going to end up breaking up. You're going to end up quitting real estate. It's the same people who were advising me. So I said, okay, cool. Thank you. And then uh, my coach at that time said, who best to hire you uh, to work with you? Who is the best person to hire is the person who cares the most about you. And he will work as hard for it with you, not for you, with you, because you are working together. And yeah, we're still together, now married, three kids, and working more together, sharing the same office. So I think we're, we, we did pretty good. And I listened to the right people. So again, there's so many advice you can get from different people, maybe meaning well, maybe meaning not so well, but just pick the advice that you can get. And then 2007 happened. If you haven't been in real estate for that long, 2007 is like the 2021 of real estate. It was busy. It was hot. We had a, an amazing year. And that was the first boom when I started three years into the business. That was me and Neil. That was the first time we branded ourselves. So we hired a branding company. Again, the same people were saying, are you crazy? Why are you getting your brand? You don't need that. Focus on the people who are giving you advice that are already successful, more the successful than you want to be, and people who really care about you. So we got branded. That was me. That was our first branding photo. I was one month pregnant. We just got married. Two months after we got married, we, had a, we, we, we got pregnant. And like, you know, life is well. 2007, we made like over $250,000. In 2007, that's a lot of money. Didn't know what to do with myself got ourselves an X5, I got a BMW. We're the first one in the family who has a BMW. I mean, we're, we're immigrants. We were like, you know, in a country, we came from the Philippines. You know, it's a different country. And so it was amazing. Then 2008 happened. 2008 was like 2023, but maybe worse. I've only been in the business for four years and I just, uh, we just had a baby. We were borrowing money against our credit line to pay our assistant. I was crying. And this is the one thing that really, really bothered me. My dad said, Katrina, why don't you go find a real job? <sighs> it's tough. I was trying to borrow money from him, but at that time, it didn't work. <laughs> and so I know that this is a real job. I love real estate. I love doing what I do. And Neil and I are doing this together, so really there's no income coming in. It's like the next, we need to sell a home, otherwise we have to sell our own home so we can have a sale, and then we can move into our parents' basement. But we bet on ourselves. We decided we're going to keep plugging along, we're going to keep working hard, focus on the solution, not on the problem. Focus on finding ways to help more people so then we can get out of the debt that we were in. We were in big debt. And we did. We survived 2008. Between 2009 and 2014, we, we switched coaches. We switched to Buffini. Not that there's something wrong with the other coaching company, but in every stage in our business, we needed a different coach. We needed a different level of support and accountability. And so we switched coaches in 2014. 9 to 14 was great. We, we managed to increase our income. We were making four to five hundred thousand dollars with one assistant. We were doing well. I mean, again, at that time, and you were like in your early 30s, life was good. It was too good. We were spending more money than we we're making. When a lot of people in real estate do that, right? What's another, what's, what's another deal, really? This, okay. Oh, I need to buy this. Okay, I'm just going to sell another house. You know, we were doing that. We were on this treadmill. And then to a point that we were spending so much more money than what we were making that we hit rock bottom. In 2014, because we were spending more than what we're making, and then the market was not the greatest in 2014. 
Um, we just had our third baby, and my grandpa was diagnosed with cancer. My parents wanted me to go home, and I said, Dad, Mom, I don't have money. He said it again. Why don't you go find a job? Um, and I said, no, we're going to keep going. And this is 10 years after being in the business, right? So I already know that I just have to, it's cyclical. Real estate is cyclical. And I just have to really continue to build the business. And um, it, the, the one moment that really turned for me is when I was at the airport on my way back to the Philippines. My parents had to pay for the whole tr trip because I don't have money. And we didn't have money. And I had a five-month-old baby I'm nursing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm at the airport. And mom, I don't have money. So my mom had to lend me her American Express. So then in case I need to buy food or something, I can use it. Well, at that time, there's no tab. There's no pin. So they had to ID me at the airport, which uh, I mean, I didn't have my mom's ID. I kind of looked like her, but I didn't have my mom's ID. Couldn't buy my own food at the airport on the way back from the Philippines. This so-called successful realtor making four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars couldn't even afford to buy herself a meal at the airport. I felt so sorry for myself. I thought, what, what an imposter! You're making half a million dollars and you can't even buy your own food. So took on the flight, got on that flight, and um, Neil and I had a chat. We sold the X5, and we. We really had to work on ourselves, what they're spending, and also work on our business. Because really, again, everything can be solved by another deal, right? <laughs> we're like, we're going to sell more homes um, to elevate, to continue the lifestyle we wanted to live. And so I basically just, this, we rebranded ourselves again, freshen up 10 years into the business, rebranded. We, we basically just changed the way we did business. We focused, we put our blinders on, and did what we needed to do. Make calls, generate more business, take care of the clients. And this is the minivan that we got. We branded it. We branded ourselves. I <laughs> know that doesn't look so pretty. Um, but the whole point here is that we, we, with this issue that we had with finances, it's also the limiting beliefs that we put ourselves. We were too proud of ourselves. We were too proud because we only work by referral. And we're like proud of it. Yeah, we only work by referral. We did not market ourselves like there's no branding, nothing. We're like, we only work by referral. There's nothing wrong with working by referral. But in order for you to scale and grow more and make more, you need to market yourself. And so we wrapped the vehicle. A lot of people laughed at us. People thought, you're crazy. You know, you think, you know, you're going to get more business. Is that getting you more business? It's not about getting you more business, it's being seen. It's building credibility, right? So yeah, we did that. Um, before I talk about the XP, 2014, it went well. We built our, our business, we built our brand, we sold more homes, and in 2018, we did, we sold over 100 homes, and then we, we have more realtors join us in our team because we have a lot of business started coming in. And um, we basically, hit number one in, our, in the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board in 2019. And I thought, okay, we need to continue to grow. Just because we hit number one doesn't mean we're like, we're all that. Again, we had to kind of like check our ego. We are not all that. We're always looking for ways to get better. Because once you think you've reached the top, it's actually not the top and it's actually a danger zone. When you're doing well in your business and selling so much homes and you're like so comfortable that's a warning sign. That's a red flag. It's a slippery slope. You got to keep going in a way that you're going to be uncomfortable because when you're uncomfortable, that means you're growing. There's so many things we learned in the last couple of days and you've heard from so many people that being uncomfortable is the best thing to do because that means you're growing. A gold only becomes more pure when it, when it undergoes that, that heat, that intense heat. And when you're going through that intense heat, actually embrace it. That means you're going to become more pure, more stronger, and even better. And so we did really well. We exposed ourselves to the bigger world out there. And uh, we thought we were so cool. Uh, like, you know, number one in the Fraser Valley Real, Real Estate Board, 223 transactions. And we were like, yeah, we're pretty good. And then we go out there. We met John Cheplak. 
he's our coach now. He coaches the top teams in the world. And then we're like, oh, crap. We're this small fish in this big pond with people producing thousands of homes every year. And so it was good. It's always important to put yourself in a position where you're the small fish in the big pond. And that's where we met the people who attracted us to EXP. We've heard of EXP before. And because I was in this like tiny little bubble of comfort, and because we were in a company that has been established, I'm like, no, I'm happy where I'm at. It's okay. I, I'm not. I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. I'm good. Da, 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 da. Yeah, EXP. It's a MLM. It's a pyramid scheme, blah, 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 blah. Well, I was not open-minded. We were not open-minded. We were too good to look at things and we were too proud until we realized we were missing out. And we opened our eyes because we reached this, this stage where we were growing there were 28 realtors in our team but we couldn't just get past through the 28 and then we were losing realtors pressures on so we decided to be open-minded and once you see it you cannot unsee it you've heard it before and it's hard for me to explain i'm still practicing on how i can really explain it that what you how you can see i've only been in the we've only been in the company for a year and a little bit so it's still a work in progress but just within a year and a little bit, our move to EXP has changed our, our lives. It's changed our team. And I can't wait to see what's ahead. For those who, who spoke in the, in the, on the stage, Randy, you've been in the company for since 2017, 18, something like that. Five and a half years. I can't wait until we're five and a half years. Because just being in the company for just over a year, our team doubled. We left the red and white and blue, um, with 20 realtors. The eight didn't come with us. It's okay, they're no longer in the business. Um, and then um, tw the 20 that moved with us, still majority of them are still with us. And now there's 40, I had to check, there were 49. There's 49 realtors in our team now. We wouldn't have been able to grow things. We, w we wouldn't have been able to grow had we not made the move. And we realized that being with DXP created more opportunities, not only for us, it's for our team partners. Our team always, like the ones who moved with us, like, thank you for making the move. I have, the pressure is good with expenses and all that. Like, like yep, some people like to pay the franchise fees, but you know, we didn't have to now. And they make more money. They save. They travel. We've had someone in our team who traveled to the Philippines for three weeks. Like, Katrina, thank you. I wouldn't have been able to experience this if we didn't make the move. And we are now building a legacy for our family. Um, I was trying to change my slide to show, hey, well, there's only 57 people in our downline, but we have 25 FLQAs. And our... our our revenue share is not quite the 20000 that that Jason Simard has every month. I think it's him. But no, maybe not him. Maybe someone else. Maybe he's making more. But anyways, I don't really look at that. But then when I, when I looked at it this morning, because I'm like, ooh, he didn't, how much did I make last month? Oh, my gosh, I made money I didn't know I made. So that money we put towards our family, our children, their education. And we are, this, is, this has allowed us to create multiple streams of income. We've access to resources and opportunities that we used to have to pay for and now here. I mean, when I started real estate, I probably wouldn't have had to hire a coach because I would have the resources that EXP has. Although, mind you, coaches are good because someone has to hold you accountable. So that's something that I'm really proud of. Pr proud of. It's not about, some people say, oh, I'm, I'm okay where I'm at. I'm, my, my fee is very minimal, $200 a month, da, da, da. But it's not about the fees. It's about the long-term return of the investment, of being part of a growing community where you can collaborate and be, be in close proximity to people. You can be, I want to be a small fish in the big pond because it's always good. It's always better because that means I'm, I have room to grow. I only have one minute. I've, I haven't even started what I needed to talk to. With 28 support staff, 46 realtors. That was when we did that. Okay, 22 accomplishments, 2023 accomplishments. Really, I'm going to talk about... And...
I'm not going to talk about the importance of lead generation because we know that that's important and we know that that's like brushing your teeth. You need to lead. Not like, okay, let's not be my, my 10 year old son who thinks that brushing his teeth is occasional. Let's think about like a real adult that brushing your teeth is twice a day <laughs> more if you're really sometimes three, right? But it's important. It has to be consistent. But I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about practice. It's really important to practice. So we, we don't even need to talk about that. If you want to be in the big leagues, you know how crazy they practice. You want to be an elite realtor, you know you need to practice every day. We don't even need to talk about it. We don't need about to talk about being skilled because really, people are entrusting us with their biggest asset. We need to be skilled. It's a given. And we should know our market. We should know our numbers. What I'm going to talk about is how we get listings that even realtors list with us. I know the first time I got a call from a realtor wanting to list their home with me in the same neighborhood that we live in, I was like, oh my gosh, Neil, I think they're just trying to get our secrets. Um, what do you think? Should I go or should I just say, no, thanks, go find someone else? Well, again, be open-minded. I went ahead and I found out that the reason why he called us is because his wife made him call us. And his wife said, we provide a white glove service that his hus her husband cannot provide. And each listing that we have gets this concierge service. Now we're staying at the, or, <laughs> I'm like, why am I saying that? We're staying at the pack room and we're at the gold level. And Again, it's because we have the opportunity to build this business and give our children an experience. We're, we're in downtown anyways. We might as well go stay at the pack room and stay at the gold level so then we can experience the white glove service. And that's what we want to provide. We want to provide, we provide an all-inclusive white glove service to the clients we serve. And this is why we get hired by realtors in our local community. And other realtors also refer clients to us because they can't provide the service that we do because they'd rather get paid the 25 percent referral fee because if they were supposed to if they were to provide these services they won't make money they might as well refer them to us we provide professional staging we have a 2500 square foot um warehouse where we can actually we, i just checked we can we we currently have 60 homes staged so we have furniture and decoration for 60 homes we have moving boxes. We deliver them at the front door. Katrina, I need boxes. The boxes are two bundles of boxes on their front door within 24 hours. I mean, junk removal is provided. We get their houses cleaned. We get their lawn yard prepared for the staging. We, we get the professional photography. We have a staff of photographers. We have three photographers on staff full time in-house and we have two graphic designers and we have our own Matterport, two Matterports to make sure we can service all the, all the houses we're listing. We have professional marketing and design movers. We take care of our clients' movers. You talk about luxury service, white glove service, every single home that we sell gets this, is offered this service. They are, even if they're, Katrina, I only own a condo. I don't know if you would take me. Even if you're a mobile home, I'd take you. So we, we treat every single client like they're luxury, right? Of course, luxury marketing, it's a different kind of approach when it comes to a $2 million home, but we mimic that into all of our other li prop listings and we provide storage. I mean, really, how does this work? I mean, for the most part, this is expensive, right? I mean, you... How, how can you get that many listings? Because we already created the brand authority. I told you about marketing yourself. I marketed, we marketed ourselves. We got out of our shells. You need to be seen. If people don't know you're good, if, because you didn't tell them you're good. We lost a listing to someone who was newer in the market, even though I've been nurturing this client for three years. We lost them to someone who is only been in the business like three years, but because he's all over our neighborhood, they thought he was better than us. And they used the numbers I gave them, even though he gave them a different number, they used the information I gave them because he had more brand authority at that time than I did. So create a brand, like, create a brand, be the brand authority in your neighborhood. 
top-notch marketing. Like, really, sh treat every single listing like it's the only listing you'll ever get. And it's also a two... I had to use $2 million now because $1 million here is no longer that good. So to treat every single listing like it's a $2 million listing. Treat every appointment. Even if you're only going for coffee with someone, treat every conversation like it's a $2 million conversation. I'm going to try and limit this, but this is really something I really want to impart with you guys. Every single time you're out there, you need to be talking to people and need to be curious about people. I am like everywhere. People, my kids are embarrassed to bring me anywhere now because I go at a, like a park. We were, do, we, they were playing volleyball and was talking to this lady. And then I said, hey, what's your name? Hi, I'm Kelsey. And, um, oh, Kelsey, where are you from? I interviewed her and my, my kids were so embarrassed. Well, guess what? You lose the shots you don't take. I, she realized, oh my gosh, you're Katrina. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's embarrassing because she thought I was a celebrity. But I'm like, yeah, we pay for all of that. So at the end of the day, guess what? Guess who's working with who now? She has three other realtors on her Facebook friend list, but now we're working with her. Because we have top-notch marketing, we built the credibility, brand authority, and I took the shot of talking to her at the park. And it's been, you know, it's been working. I talk to everyone. I'm kind of embarrassing to be around. <laughs> um, and also have a proven track record. Now, how would you have a proven track record? Well, take it one step at a time, right? Take one listing at a time and do a great job so then you will be recommended. Invest in hiring the right people. We have over, I keep saying 23 support staff. Neil told me, Katrina, we have 28. I stopped counting at 23 because I don't want to look at the payroll, but we have more. We have a lot of people so then we can provide the white glove service. Invest in the right resource and technology. EXP has access to all of them, so make sure you pay attention and execute. Do what you say you will do. Get ahead of your client's needs. We, all, we already heard that. Call them before they can call you. Give them their options. Go over the worst case scenario. People are scared to tell people that their home is worth less than what they think, right? What's the worst case scenario? Tell them the truth. People are entrusting us with their biggest assets. And the truth is, when they're entrusting us with their biggest assets, they expect us to tell them the truth. I mean, if I'm going to a doctor and I have symptoms and I have cancer, I don't want the doctor to not tell me I have cancer. I'd be, he'd be sued, right? It's the same thing. I want anyone who's in front of me to tell me the truth because that's why I hired them for. Don't be scared. They won't kill you. I mean, I hope not. But at the end of the day, you need to tell them the truth because now once you tell them the truth, that's the worst thing that could have happened. And I always tell the team this, did you die? It, the worst thing that could happen is they don't hire you. They, they list with someone else. Happened to me, two doors, my neighbor two doors down, they hired someone else. And they listed $300,000 over. I'm like, I'm sorry, I need to tell you the truth. I, I will help you within limits. Your home is, I, I don't have a crystal ball to tell you exactly, but based on the facts, this is what the value of your home is. They're like, Katrina, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to work with your competitor just to piss you off because you're going to drive by my sign every day and you're going to see it's not your sign. So I said, okay, that's fine. Well, I'm laughing every day because I'm like, <laughs> he spent the money I didn't have to. It's been listed twice and it's still not sold. So I went over the worst case scenario and the worst, case that could worst thing that could happen is they list with someone else, but then they won't sell. Be attached to the process, not the results. Just go through the, there's so many processes that you've learned. There's so many things that you can implement. Just go, stick with the process. Execute and do the work. Start now. How does this apply? There's Katrina. There's so many things you shared. That's a lot. I I can't really hire 23 people right now. No, we didn't hire 23 people right away. Start one at a time, one small step at a time, one service at a time. We didn't start with like we started our staging division with three pillows from HomeSense. Neil like gave me a hard time. Like he's like three pillows. What are you doing? Why are you buying home sense stuff? I started with three pillows. Now we have three. No, we just hired. We we just hired our third stager. 
And we now have three stagers. We have a, you know, there's just, it, you need to start somewhere. You can't get there right away unless you win the lottery and buy everything. But even that, it's not worth it, right? Be consistent. I already talked about that. Continue to add and invest in people as you grow. Don't cheap out. Hire people who do things better than you. I'm not very organized, and I had to hire someone to do my little slide here, and then I messed it up because I added more stuff. And then continue to add more resource and service as you grow. Once you sell another house, add another service. Always think of how you can make things better. Learn something, explore, and be around people who are doing more. And again, execute and do the work. All of this is just entertainment if you don't do the work. And by doing that, you will create loyal customers. So always think you provide extraordinary client experience, create never-ending relationship, and most of all, think beyond real estate. People are inspired by the work that we do, especially when we go and think about things beyond real estate. It's not just about the transaction. It's about the impact you're making in the world through real estate. And so make people feel great. Don't just say it. Don't just BS them because they will forget what you said. They will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you make them feel. Make every client feel like they're the only client you're working with and they're special. They're a big deal. Okay, I better really stop now. I mean, I think that's enough information. It's like I'm six minutes over. I could see Crystal standing in the corner, so I'm just going to go. Here's the last part. All of this is useless if you don't believe it's possible. You have to believe it's possible. You have to believe in yourself. You have to take the shots because if you don't take it, nothing will happen and you won't die anyway. And commit to the long term. Started with three pillows and committed to the long term and added to it. Work on something beyond real estate. And at the end of it all, know that you are worthy. Have a great day, guys.